Uh, so I call our meeting to order. It's 6.04. Um, the first item of business. Sorry for my uh, To review and approve the meeting minutes from December 4th. Um, and there was one thing I wanted to just check on. What was the final decision? Because it uh, will come up later. Um, engineering building plans be submitted to the building inspector prior to the board's next meeting. If the plans are submitted to the building inspector by that date, then we'll consider a request. Okay, yes, that's what I recall was as well. So that, that was the, the main thing I wanted to just double check from looking through these earlier. Is there a motion regarding the minutes? Motion to approve. Second? I'm abstaining because I was not here. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, great. Um, vendor payroll warrants. Do you have the things I signed there? Are there any uh, comments or questions there? Okay. Uh, next item is public comment. Are there any uh, comments from the public? Related to items not listed on the agenda. <coughs> uh, seeing none, let's move on to our public hearing. Um, we have a first public hearing, a joint petition from Verizon and Eversource to install utility poles and three regulators on Long Plain Road, which is continued from December 4th. Uh, good evening. Uh, Michael Rosenberg from Eversource. Um, I apologize for missing the last meeting. Personal oh, yeah. family things came up and I had to postpone. Um, so I have been talking with the two abutters of the area. Um, this, going. Yeah, this is the Rob, um, this is Robleski and, and Moroski's. Yep. So we've discussed the original petition location. We've discussed alternate locations. Um, and I think we're we're at a point where we have a good location that's acceptable. It's not the petition location, and it's not alternate one or two. Um, it's going to be, and I can show on a plan, I don't have the official petition, because we still have the one in front that we're gonna want to either table or rescind, but I wanna just keep you kind of in the loop. Um, the new location would be north of the petitioned option. Um, it would be out of line of sight from Mr. Moroski's, it kind of, stays slightly north of his driveway. It actually puts it a little more favorable for um, Miss Robleski because it's no longer at the southern end of her property or even the middle, it's a little further ahead, so it leaves the um, your frontage, right? I guess the, the available frontage there, um, a larger portion at the south. Um, it's not in conflict with any other neighbors in terms of view. It'll be shaded by trees. Um, it is going to require a little more utility work for us. Um, we'll have to change the alignment of the utility pole line. Um, not going to, you know, it's not going to adversely affect, you know, anything really in the area. We'll show you when we do the actual petition where poles are going to be placed. But um, I think it's a good solution. Um, and, and it sounds like. Um, it's a good compromise that both the others are willing to live with. Yes, Even yeah. It's not, it might not be either of their first choices. You know, honestly, the more we, the more I look at it, I think it, I think it will be. Um, oh, just okay. because the petitioned option, um, Moroski was okay with. It was near the end of his driveway. Robleski, because of where it was in relation to the lot, it was not ideal. This moves it north. So it, it really has no effect. First choice for both. Yeah, it has no real effect on Moroski, and then it's a little better for Robleski. So. And just to make sure I understand this uh, uh, sketch, the, the circle with the X, it says regulators there, and then there's a square that says new pole. Those are the sketch. one. That's yes. yeah, Brian's yes, sketch. So you've seen Brian's sketch. You've thought sketch. about hiring on a per diem basis. Yeah, they, so the, it's eight. those that square and that. Thank you. The square and the circle X. Yes. Are these are the newly 
proposed but not yet petitioned? Correct, yeah. Um, Just from a schematic view. Okay. So we would basically close this hearing by denying the existing petition and expect uh, the petition for these locations to come through in whatever time frame they come through. I mean, it'll be later January I'm, with holidays and everything. Okay. I have Thank a question. Fred. Sure. Uh, what you're proposing here is going to be, I guess, south of the existing pole. There, why can't it be on the other side of the pole? Um, the other side of the pole is a little too close to that ravine. Well, uh, uh, okay, I, I, I know that, but looking at the one you're putting on River Road, you're close to the ravine on River Road. I think topography-wise, the um, elevation change, if we go 18 feet north of 43, or pole 43, the elevation does drop, so we'd prefer to have these kind of closer to the same plane. Um, yeah, the, the, the ele yeah, elevation of the property drops. I don't know along the road whether it drops or not, but it does. And there's a guardrail. There's a guardrail there as well. I mean, we we can petition to relocate the existing pole as close as we can to that area. Um, so move pole okay. would be 43, okay. move it you north. Do that, if you can do that, because yeah. Uh, yeah, that would help, because uh, I don't see the, uh, the big difference in this location versus River Road. And River Road, to me, seems to be closer to the wet area, mm -hmm. ditch, ravine, whatever you want to call it, than here, and there's probably room to do that as well. So, yeah. okay, look at that. And then we'd also look to set a pole on the other side of the ravine, just yeah. because at pole 43, the wire crosses the road. Right. We don't like to have those angles on the platforms. Right. So we'll go one pole forward and cross back over. It's really, it's kind of a limited um, limited issue. It's not going to create any other issues, any major like tree trimming issues or anything. It's just setting another pole probably 30 feet and then crossing over. But we'll, we will obviously reconvene once we do the official petition for this. Okay. And this is the location where it was going to be not three in a row on a stand, right? Because it says regulators there. It's next to an existing pole. It's not all of those regulators hanging on that one pole. No, so this will be a platform. A platform. So where is the other pole that needs to be put on to put the platform up? So what we will do is... It's a, it would be 18 feet? It'd be 18 feet south of pole 43. Okay. But pole, so the X is the pole, not the regulators. Yeah, kind of the new pole. Um, and pole 43, we're going to relocate as close as we can to that guardrail. Okay. Um, Understood. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so what would be an appropriate motion here to close the hearing and reject the existing petition yeah your request is to rescind it right yeah. correct okay do your motion does have oh comments? does anyone else have a comment on this one okay motion second all in favor yeah. Aye. <coughs> okay very good um we have a second uh, petition it's a couple well, it's early but maybe we can take that up um there's a petition from Eversource to install utility poles and three regulators on Christian Lane. Um, that's this one, right? This color one? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So let me turn it back to our guest for the moment. Okay. I, I, I would suggest waiting until 6.15. That's the advertised time for this. My suggestion to you. Would you like to chair the meeting? No, <laughs> uh, my suggestion to you. If you want to go ahead, that's up to you. But I, I think uh, our discussion will extend well beyond the okay. um, So we might as well get started. Okay. Um, so this petition is for a three phase regulator platform on Christian Lane. It is close to. See, I don't know if I put an actual address here. Um, it's 24 Christian Lane just shows up on the... Yeah. Is that what... It, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so... Christian oh, yeah. 24 Christian Lane. There it is. And where are Christian Lane? Is that a bridge? Is that a bridge? Yeah. Yeah. 
So this is just west of the bridge. Um, we did a site visit here maybe three months ago, I think. Um, we looked at visual impact to the resident on the hill. Um, you know, looked at some of the other impacts. There's nothing across the street or at that location, you know, no housing directly there, right? We, we kind of concentrated on the view down. I know we walked up the driveway and, and tried to move things the best we could. Um, shifted the new pole, I think it was originally shown going west of the existing, so we shifted the new pole going east of the existing. Um, yeah, that's by memory as well. Yep. Yeah, so this one um, will be in line with the other pole line that's there, 18-foot um, <coughs> separation between the two poles, platform and regulators. Um, there will be adjacent pole upgrades in size and class, um, just to make sure that we're, um, I think we talked about this last time, you know, we want no more than a five-foot transition between height of poles, so we'll be upgrading the size of the adjacent poles, um, you know, five feet. No new equipment on those, just... Um, adjacent poles and transferring wire and equipment that may be there. Um, yes? And all the, the fighters have been notified about this. Mm -hmm. yeah, including the folks at 24 Christian League, which I think there are no buildings there. Yeah, my conversations have been fine. I haven't heard from anybody. Have you had conversations with voters? I have not heard anything. I have not spoken with them um, directly, no. I know, I think the Commonwealth is a larger butter across the, the road. I don't know if that's state or I don't know, conservation property, I'm not sure. But. Probably a combination. Well, if. Yeah. What, I'm, uh, what I'm remembering from that um, visit is that the, um, the area, uh, let's see, on our sheet, that means this is the point, uh, that the area around here was had a lot of trees correct and the trees were tall enough that they would block the view from we i, I remember walking three quarters of the way up the driveway mm -hmm. uh on this one um so it and it would not have been blocked anywhere near as effectively if it had been put on the other side correct now putting it at the next pole the objection was that's close to a uh a wetlands uh, a creek or a yeah, I think uh, that pole is also another corner pole. Yeah, uh, yeah, and I, yeah, I, I, so I remember we had discussed that as a, a possibility, but um, since this one seemed to work, it was uh, what we what we thought was best at the time. I think Fred was there. I don't know if you have any other things to to add to that. No, I'm just fine. This is on, so are there? Um, this, are, is on Christian Lane. this is on Christian Lane. And west of the bridge at the Mill River? Yes. 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 On the south side of the road. Yeah. Would you care, yeah, yes. would you care to see the map? Yeah. Oh, um, the, the name at 24 Christian Lane? No. Or the name of the person oh. speaking? Oh, yeah. Oh, can you tell me who you are and where you're from? Brett Young, I'm 18 Christian Lane. Oh, okay. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and oh, okay. So that's you're the person whose driveway I walked halfway up to yep, yep. to, uh, to uh, figure out whether uh, what the location is going to look like. Um, so that's uh, uh, so. I, I, do you have any other any other comments to make? Or uh, no, it's just I was just seeing what kind of structure you were planning on. So uh, I can show you an image. Just hold on one second. Can you just how yeah. far from the Brett's driveway is it told by your... Um, I have to find a map of the driveway. It's always the 90 feet. That's his property line. Yeah. Because it's on that same side. Going up the hill. Going up the hill. I would assume his driveway is somewhere over here. Yeah, his driveway I think is somewhere yeah. around there. Yeah. Uh, and this is over on actually the next property. Which is um, my old property. Which we sold to the state. That one is a state. Wait, we're, the, Brett's on this side? Yeah. Oh, that, yeah, okay, I'm sorry. Um, where's the mill room on this? Well, where was over here? Over here. Somewhere. It's just off the, uh, here, yeah. this is the. So here's a picture of one. The uh, river's on the river next. There. So it's on so this property, but probably taller, would be somewhere yeah. around here so on that map. Oh, so who's uh, the owner of this one now? It says uh, Ann Barker. Oh, 
Like for Sam Parker. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I'm trying to remember how to get uh, the overlay. If I wanted to. Imagery. That's the existing strength. Right. So this is an old image, so these are taller. One, two, maybe. Okay, okay. And we're proposing it. Yeah. So, so, structure. so we can see the driveway. Yeah. Yeah. There are trees there. With these trees here, because right. the if it had been the on the here. other side, these trees yeah. were a lot thinner, and we're not going to yeah. block the view very well. Yeah. Um, but the location to the on this page to the right of the existing pole would be behind mm -hmm. these rather tall trees down here. And why can't the poles go across the street? Because that the, land is never going to be developed. There isn't any on that. It might be more, actually more visible if it were put across the street. On this side. No, you're stuck on this side. Right. I don't think there's any. Uh, I, I don't. We, did, we didn't uh, uh, consider that. I'm just kind of curious. Because we didn't consider it. But I think if you took the same location on the other side of the street, that would actually be more visible to the folks at 18 Christian. Oh, perhaps. I'm just saying yeah. that yeah. no one's ever going to live there. Right. I, right. I completely understand. I do think that would... Um, just looking at the angle with where the bridge is, mm -hmm. we would we would be really close to kind of the same location, just on the other side of the street. But you lose a lot of that covering okay. from the side bushes. I think that you know there were some other trees. There was a set of tall trees that also helped. Right. Yeah. So you lose that okay. by right. going across. And I remember the street. we talked about how high would it be. Yep. Anyone else have any comments to make on this one? I'd suggest you contact the end again, make sure she knew what the structure looked like. It's right on her, right? Yeah, it's part of her property there. Mm -hmm. Good. I don't and you have you haven't talked with any of ours. No. This is the first I've heard of it when we got that card in the mail. Yeah. Well, that's why we you send the cards out, and yeah. so the hearing is your chance to say something. And if we need more time, we can continue with the hearing. Um, uh, but normally, we do that when someone has uh, an objection to the location, uh, you know, based on their own uh, property. Uh, and I don't know. What's the purpose of upgrading to a platform transformer like that? So we're doing, it's called Volt Bar Optimization. It's a um, system-wide project to regulate voltage. Um, one of the larger reasons for this is with the increased generation we have in the system. You know, larger solar developments, we have wind in different areas, we have larger customers, you know, demand. Um, so what we're finding is near so starts at your substation and then all this wire runs to some dead end somewhere, right? It ends somewhere. We're finding the farther along the line we get, we're not able to maintain voltage, which is why we need the regulation. And we're also putting up capacitor banks as well, which, which all works within this, it's a SCADA system, but it's measuring and regulating what we have for voltage near the ends of certain lines because Customers are experiencing, you know, some voltage flicker or some drop in certain areas due to what's being generated and pushed into the system and what use what customers are using in the system. Um, so the regulators and the capacitor banks work with the substation to increase the output as needed to reach the customer at the end of the line. Because um, so if you receive subpar voltage essentially your equipment in your home is not running as efficiently as it should right if something requires 120 volts and you're only giving it 110 that piece of equipment isn't working the way it should be right so we're this is one of our efforts and it's a statewide effort multi-state because we are doing it in Connecticut and in New Hampshire as well not to the same scale but on sort of pilot programs um, it's just to improve the voltage for all the customers at the end, 
we can't we do our best to provide circuit ties you know you go to the end and we try to tie it with another circuit so you can feed and and swap the loops and the feeds but we just can't do that everywhere right there's just some roads where that wire is going to end and there's no way we can get a tie to it um, so this is a we said a bolt bar voltage optimization project um, trying to provide consistent steady voltage to all customers on all night um, you know because we do have like i said we have generators on the system that are generating and not generating so that that is fluctuating right so they're pumping they're pumping electricity in at certain points and then at other points they're not so we have to do what we can to, to maintain the voltage for all the customers um, and they're placed and we have been asked you know why can't we put those right outside the solar development but it's purely based on where the voltage starts to drop so that we can we have a certain percentage we can be in right so we go to where we start reaching that percentage so that we can up the voltage as needed we're really limited because any farther we go you're going to receive voltage drop between those two locations and if we go backwards you may not be able to push it as far as you could so it's a lot of these are down to quarter of a mile type locations on the system you guys good we want to reach out to Ann or we, you know she was notified well, it, it is a building line it has frontage for a building line yeah well, so um, depending where you put the driveway or the building I guess yeah I mean, this would definitely determine that you don't put the driveway at that location you'd have to put it kind of to the left or to the right of that um, and uh, yeah and and yeah, this is hard because the the person who's involved is not here, and they were notified. Right. <coughs> yeah, so I think they're talking yeah. about the pole. Maybe right there is that one. It looks like a pole. There yeah. could be a pole there, and you're talking about putting the new one here. So. Right. Because of those trees, and this is 2008, so there's actually more uh, growth in this area. And limited access, and there is limited access to that lot in terms of what's going to be. So you have to go here, drive yeah. over here, and either go there or over here. Yeah. I would, my two cents would be that we would, all due respect to the utilities, I, I think we should reach out to Ann just to say, hey, just so, because she's a, you know, an important part of our community. Mm -hmm. Not that everyone is. And show her what a what the system looks like with the three poles. And yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So then we would have a motion to continue. Motion. Yes. Second. Then we need a uh, time and date certain for that. Um, our next meeting is January eighth. Let it be right up front. Could be at six o'clock. There be. What is? What are you asking to happen between now and then? And who are you asking to do it? <laughs> I, well, I know what I'd like to ask, but I, can, I think I think <laughs> you're quite good at this. I, I seriously, I think you're quite good at this. And and if you were to reach out to Ann Barker, Ann Barker, yeah, and show her where you're planning on putting this. Um, again, not to put more work on you, but you explain it better than any of us. Okay. You can explain why, uh, you know, the rationale. And if she has questions, you're gonna have answers where if we have questions, where she has questions for us, we're gonna just call yeah. you. Mm -hmm. right. This may be from, it could be from a point of view. Yeah, I already have a poll there. I already can't put a driveway there. Maybe it doesn't make that much difference. And if that's the case, then we know, but it does seem like it might be prudent. Right. Yeah. 
how long before the, the platforms actually put on River Road? So I guess she went in and show her location, show somebody the location. I'm not you sure. Know? I, I, similar to the witness test for the solar, I don't work in those departments. I can sure. ask around and see. But um, gee, I think Ann can handle a picture. Okay, well, I'm just, yeah. Yeah. I have a, just wondering. I've been one. compiling images Something. for these types of right. reasons. So I do okay. have a decent <clears throat> list of images and perspectives and yeah. views. So. Okay. Um, I think moving forward, just because I don't want to forget to make this comment, I mean, moving forward, when we talk about solar installations, which I know we're all very much in favor of, we need to have a conversation about anticipated siting for any additional poles that are going to go up so that the conversation isn't in month A about the location of the solar, and then in month F, Oh yeah, now we got to, or you know, six months later when, when we're going to go online. Oh, now we got to think right. about. I think the co the conversation is going to change because uh, new solar is going to all but be required to have batteries storage right. at site, which will reduce the, the need for transformers for that particular reason. Not necessarily. And reduce. Yeah. yeah. So it's I, so I think they almost designed them as if it wasn't there if the battery option wasn't there. So just just for future projects, in case in case anyone tells you the battery means we don't need to put these up. Oh, I didn't say okay. don't need. I said reduces then mm -hmm. Okay. Because then you've got uh, so much more control over how much power goes away uh, from a, and then you can store that peak solar load and let it come out more slowly and so on. Mm -hmm. So, so I didn't say I said reduce. It's still probably a good conversation to have mm -hmm. while it's happening. Yeah, so I'm and, sure and I don't know visit. that they can tell you in advance. So where we they have to locate this as well. So a customer applies; they pay an application fee. It goes through a circuit study. The circuit study will determine any other circuit improvements required regulators, capacitor banks, three-phase wire build-out, wire size increase. Sometimes they apply to the town or make, I think they start their process sometimes before they do all of that, right? So some of these, some of the developers know what they're going to need, right? More or less. Right. So they take the risk and move forward with the purchase or the lease. They maybe start some permitting. Um, but it's obviously within your your right to say what are the improvements before you you know you permit right. um, because you want to know what affects other areas in your town. And so, not just the, the yeah. footprint of the solar itself. And they so when you ask, they may not know depending on where the study is and what phase that's in because those studies take usually a few months. Um, we can wait for the study. To be done. I'm sorry. We can always wait for the study to be done. Correct. Grant of yeah. Okay. And I mean some of those some of those studies do drive whether or not they move forward with the process, whether or not it's lucrative, right? Because the system improvements could be so great that they don't want right. to move forward. Right. So. Okay. Do, do you have a picture of one of these for that? I don't know if the voters that are here, if they want to see what exactly it looks like. I just, um, I just went over with the yeah, other did? Okay. Right. Right. Sorry. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, I showed him. And just looking, and I will reach out to Ann. Um, there is a driveway entrance on that property today. It is. Uh, but it's uh yeah it was the the snowmobile access and it goes uh, it's like this thing that goes over to the state owned property so i don't think that's a a, a real driveway okay no it's not it's it's, it's a trail for okay. people yeah. people walk it more than anything else and they're snowmobiling but in the spring summer and fall yeah. people walk that to the back they like use the all the time yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah okay yeah. Yeah. The farmers use it to go in and out down to the yeah. farmers use it too right so, okay. A lot of access is used, so we want to, we want we do want to be cognizant of mm -hmm. other purposes other than a potential housing lot driveway down the road. Yep. Yeah. So the proposed location, I will obviously talk to Ann. The proposed location does still keep it west of that entrance, that driveway. Um, but we'll I can meet with her in the field and go over it. Okay. And take a look at those. Yes, correct. It does. Because I looked because I was like, well, maybe we could shift it east. <clears throat> But with that driveway there, I think it would just it would right. crowd that access. So right. I'll talk to her. Right. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. So uh, we have a uh, a motion. 
um, to uh, continue the whole hearing to 6 o'clock on January 8th, 2020. Um, and in the meantime, being in touch with uh, the immediate order. Okay, all in favor? Yep. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good holiday. Thank, Thank you. you. See you next year. Okay. Uh, so, now I'm here in old business. Uh, should we give them a parking space? Yeah, we should get them a <laughs> parking space. All right, to discuss the status uh, of the improvements to Club Castaways for the board to review, the operation of the establishment under the terms of the variance convention on August 8, 2018. So, um, do we know the status of the engineering plan, which I believe was the thing we were looking for? We got an email. I believe we got an email. Got an email. So that's uh, and uh, I have a copy of something uh, dated yesterday, December seventeenth, saying our engineered plan has been submitted and accepted by the building inspector. The permit has been issued. We continue to work diligently toward January fourteenth completion date. I am attaching the stamped plan for your reference. Would it be possible to video Wednesday's meeting? Video in. And I think that was not going to be possible. Um, but I see the stamped plan, uh, which is the main thing that we were asking about on the previous me at the previous meeting, uh, December fourth. Uh, yep. Yeah, December fourth. Okay. And the and the building permit has been the, issued. The building permit has been issued. Yep. So the only thing. So there's nothing, there's nothing between right this moment in time and and shovels in the ground, no. other than scheduling a time. No regulatory right concern. And have you been? There'll be a couple of inspections along the way, yeah. and then we have to do footing for progress. Right. Yep. Have you been into? Do you have a contractor uh, picked out? Um, very close to signing up, but yeah, we'll have this built by the 14th. Okay, so so the contractors selected based yep. upon their availability as well as their skill level, obviously. Yep. I have some questions, not so much the the structure of what you're building, but you're attaching it to the existing building. I assume there's a doorway there and there's lighting on the existing. Yeah, so we did all the lights around the exterior of the building, cameras, and then the plan. I think the cement wall is going to attach the existing part of the building, which is wood. Okay. And then there's a steel gate that's required there too. But there's a doorway on, it, on this part of the building? Uh, there's a steel gate there in the plans? Yeah. Well, yeah, but also the, 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 the wall that goes through the building doesn't have a door in it. Oh, that, yeah, there's a, there's a door there. Yeah, that's what allows access in and out. It's not the drawing, but it is there. Right? Um, it's not yeah, show sure. here how you get access other than that. Yeah. Okay. Yes, there's, a, and there's a light, and there's lights back there. So but people using the space don't have to go out of the building walk around so the door is marked on there yeah we see the steel Wait. door but the, on the building it's the door that goes back into the yeah gate. so there's a steel gate that's on i'm not sure it's on just call the right side right here but there's a steel gate okay, and there's the side. entrance to the the bar is right there too so and that, and that door is going to be a, like a one-way door uh, exit line, only exit only so you can't you can't come can't. in Back in. You're right on camera, right back there. As soon as you step back, there's spotlights step up. Yeah. So, right. So exit only. So, the, so on this side, side there was. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. On this side, but there's just a straight line here. Nothing indicated. No, nothing. No, no. There's gonna then, be. That's just gonna be a straight wall. Where is the building? On this. Okay. Castaways. Yeah. Exit out. Porch. All the 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 area. Steel gate right there. Still yeah, so this is where our dumpsters are on this side, where the parking lot is, with the dumpsters right there. So this is completely blocked off. The steel gate is on this side, and this is castaways. This is how you get into the. Oh, back. so if the dumpsters were not there, you can you could just watch. So if the dumpsters were not over here, this would just be completely open. Uh, the dumpsters are maybe this big. So yeah, if you took the dumpster away, then. The area be open. So, okay. So I, I guess. No, no. There, there's the eight foot. There's the eight foot tall cinder block wall that will be going 
across the way where the dumpsters are now. Yeah. Right now there's a chain link fence. So we're basically replacing the chain link fence with, with the, the center block wall. Yeah. The, the dumpster sits right near the chain link fence right now. Okay, so there's a, an eight foot center block wall that's not on this drive. So <laughs> I'm a little confused now. So yeah, I, I saw. Yeah, so no. So I, that's all cinder block right. wall. What you're looking at, that's all cinder block so, wall. So, but I see this. Where's one, the building? Two, three. Here's the building. There's the building. There's the, the bar exit from Castaways. Yeah. This is how we the boys would exit out into the back area. Yeah. This is all cinder block wall. Cinder block wall. Cinder block wall. Exit only. Steel gate out. We got cameras here, cameras there, okay. spotlights there, spotlights there. Okay. Everybody I was just, filmed. I thought, you were saying camera. Camera. I thought you were saying this was, you know, this was exit only. I was like, no, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They can get back in. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. moving both ways, they would come yeah. in and out that way. Okay. So, as I'm looking at it, right, I understand this goes into the establishment. Yeah. Okay. If someone can, wants to exit out into the parking lot, they can't do it from here. No, you're saying? they cannot. Okay, so that steel door was the thing that I... So this door is one way, you can only go out? Correct, yeah. But then once you're out here, you can't get out of the box? No, if he's saying that the, 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 the exit to the, the, the steel door to um, the parking area, that's exit only. Where is the steel door to the parking area? There's no steel door to the parking area, because okay. we're, we're keeping basically the existing fence. We're just basically making it cinder block. So where there was an exit on the chain link fence, there's now going to be an exit with the cinder block wall. There's going to be a steel gate fence. So okay. steel, steel exit right there. That's the exit out right there. But that, that's pointing steel. to this door, that 36. Oh, OK, I see what you're saying. No, I mean, the exit's right there. Well, it says there's a steel door to be centered on the wall here. OK. okay. Um, Let me see, maybe I'm looking at the plans from this one. Yeah, um, so I guess when I was looking at them, I thought it only made sense if this was, it says face of existing wood structure to remain, and it's pointing to something that's a little ambiguous to me. Um, the building inspector knew right away what we were talking right. about. Right, I know, I'm not a building yeah. inspector. Yeah, so, I mean, I'm so handling the day-to-day -day operations. I, right. My partner, Julius, is the contractor. Right, manager, so. so what I see is three concrete walls mm -hmm. right and yeah so this must i don't be the, really understand what this section is i don't know, i can i can have the building inspector kind of clarify for us if we want what's, what's the question the solid wall the solid uh, existing if this is if this is where the actual building is i don't think that's correct okay yeah i that's that's now what i think the, the building's to the left the, the building is on back. this side yeah i think this so. is a door that goes out Right. Maybe it only shows. Maybe not off. to the parking area, but so, to somewhere out. Because this is probably true north. I would think there's no. That would be this the, that, brick, that, brick, that door brick, shown there would be this must be the yeah. existing. Okay. So now, so that's the thing. From the existing building into this space, there's no door marked on the picture. It might not be required. Yeah. So, okay? but there is in fact a door, and then there's a way for people in case of emergency to get out. There. Yes. Okay. Those are the things I was asking. Yep. Yep. You know the codes for egress and fire safety and yeah there's a rear door some good upgrades yeah. yeah there's a rear door into that space currently right yeah you can exit the building into that chain link correct and then from there you can exit out into the property okay. Okay. so that's going north by okay yeah, okay where, no, yeah. where will the center gate fence tie in which where, where on this maybe to the right maybe over here i think yeah but i mean where is it tying in over here or is it does it go like this Tying into what? Tying yeah. into this, the stockade fence, the eight foot stockade fence. Is I don't it? think the eight foot okay. stockade fence is contiguous with this. I think it's, that's isn't that a long Yeah. Way? Yeah, but it's supposed to, isn't it supposed to tie into this no, structure? My understanding is I'm not entirely sure. Place. I'm kind of unable to answer that. I'm just, on here, I'm not entirely sure. There's not, there's no condition that it tie into. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's obviously close, yeah. but it doesn't have to tie. Yeah, I thought the stockade fence was for a different purpose. Right, but it comes awful close to this, or it's supposed to come close to it. Yeah. Right, but it doesn't have to be. I guess, Fred, okay. what, what, what I take out of it is that that drawing does not, it's not required to include the stockade fence no. yeah. as part of the drawing. It's, right. it's, yeah. it's a separate. Right, but I'm just wondering where it's at. Right. Right. I understand. It, it, it that seems like nobody here knows the exact answer. Yeah. Okay. To that. Okay. 
Um, so, we should uh, entertain a motion uh, regarding uh, an extension for the, the compliance with that particular term of the variance. I would am amend it um, for completion by the 14th. I would, yeah, we can extend it to the 14th then. No, we don't and meet then, on the 14th, then, but, but yeah, but, uh, but not a minute later, in, in my opinion. It yeah, sounds I, I, I would agree. I mean, if that, that's the date that. That's the date that they've we're proposed. Told. Uh, the last right, month. but if, you know, if we're on point with starting immediately and getting ground, you know, and the inspector comes out and there's a change as far as the footings and you need something done, I'll communicate with the board. It's in your hands at that point. I feel confident we'll be able to make the date and we're going to work quick and work through it. Could but, I make a request, please? Um, sure. I, I would, that communication should not be, preferably not on the 12th or the 13th, but the minute, if, if there's a delay mm -hmm. because the inspector is asking for some change, mm -hmm. that the communication be made immediately and not two days before the deadline. Understood. Okay. okay. I, I, I guess I would I would suggest that we get a, a I guess a sign off or a final inspection from the building inspector to know that it's built according to plan by the 14th. I mean anybody can drive by and see there's a wall there, but I, I, to me it's critical that it's built according to plan and the building yeah. inspector proves it. We we don't know what we're proving if we drive by or we go there. I think it should go back to the building inspector. It does, though. Yes, yeah, we so have an open permit. Uh, right. So, so you'll so, provide that information. To okay. us I, I guess I'm saying that we should have that by the 14th, and from the building inspector. I, I would like to see that actually. If our next meeting is the 8th, we should have what Fred's requesting by that meeting, because obviously that that's. It's already been approved. A sign off from the building. But, but if it's built, it's got to be built, though. No, I'm talking about oh, final, oh, final inspection. Oh, you mean the final inspection? Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, yeah I, 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 that's fine. I, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not trying to make their deadline be a week earlier. If well, that's no, exactly that. what right. you do. But, um, okay. That's fine. But no, they I provide by the 14th. If they don't provide by the 14th, then they may be out of compliance right. okay. on the 15th. Right. And they understand the consequences of that. Right. Okay. So all communication. Okay. Yeah, so that's, it's on them to do the, the communication. That's a chief so, one. I just have yeah. one question about the, the structure. Is there is there a roof or a covering over the top? No. I'm just thinking for security purposes, if somebody it's, can hop up over the top of it, if, if it's open eight, or not. Eight foot wall in dairy, someone could pull yeah. themselves over. Okay, so there is no I got five. two cameras right there. Yes. Spotlight. Yeah. Um, we would like to dress it up a little bit, you know, start so sleeping in some yeah. nice okay. trees or something. I was just curious if there was a roof the, the, on it. That spotlight shines immediately. I'm curious, yeah. when you have the cameras there, someone's not monitoring those cameras minute by They're minute. They're recording, I mean, I got them on my phone, so. But, so, but if somebody were to, but it's not a motion, there's no motion detector, so if somebody tries to hop that fence, you're not alert, alerted right away or anything? No. No, okay. 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 okay, all right. So, Fred or John, make a motion. Okay, I make a motion that uh, the wall be constructed, cinder block wall be constructed by January 14th with I th final. I think the language has to be we are giving an extension. We're given, the, okay, given an extension to construct the, the cinder block wall till January 14th with final inspection from the uh, Franklin County Building Inspector on that day on January 14th or sooner. Second. All those in favor? Yep. Can I just ask one question? Oh, sure. And on the condition that no one be allowed in the rear break area until it wasn't oh. instructed, right? Until the final inspection. Yes, yes. Until the final inspection. Yes, thank you. Okay. And all in favor? Yep. Aye. Aye. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Irene. Thank you. We have the other, the other component of it is. The other component, okay. And the licenses is the uh, well, well. We the discussed about that we the, the wall. Well, we talked about the wall, and then under the terms of the variance, 
Um, every second monthly meeting, we're supposed to talk about how the operation part of it is going, and that's why. Mm. That's why Jim's here. Uh, Chief Sneeze here. Okay. Uh, to give an update about how the operation's been going, and you guys can ask Nick any questions about about that. But yes, I looked over the, the reports. Part of it. They're, they're, they're rather, they don't say a lot, but that sounds like it's a good thing. No news is good news, Jim? Yes. So I submitted the 11, <coughs> the 11 different logs that we had for the, the days that we were there. Um, out of those 11 logs, there was one day that had two, two minor incidents that were dealt with by their security with no, no issues. Um, I included in the, uh, the summary that I gave you, just because if, if somebody were to request a copy of the, the, our normal daily log um, for the things that show up, there was no detail officer on scene, um, and for one of the incidents, there was the, the establishment wasn't even open. But just I just wanted to include that, just so you guys could see that there was two two calls for service that that went there, because um, that that would show up on our on our daily log. Um, but those again, one of those incidents really had nothing to do with the establishment. Argument between two people over a car that was getting picked up, and then um, the other incident uh, was dealt with without any without any uh, issues. It's more of a civil matter, so we didn't really have to get involved or investigate any further. So. If I may, my only question, and I appreciate the logs, and it sounds like everything's going well. What's the level of interaction between the security that's on duty and the detail on those nights where there's a detail? Is it, has it been, is it distant, is it cordial, is it chummy, is it, I, I, I just don't know what kind of interaction or communication levels the, your security has and your details have in terms of working together and doing yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. So there's, we, we've had, I think we've had five, five different officers there. Uh, you've got five different personalities. Some of them are more outgoing than others. Um, some of them that are outgoing, they're talking with everybody that works. They're talking with Nick, they're talking with the bartender. They're just kind of mingling around, talking with people, seeing what's going on. Great relationship with the security. Um, we kind of have a station where we can sit with the security, we work with them, they go outside with them when they check the parking lot. So we've, we've got a, a great working relationship with their security at this point. I think we've had a couple of officers that are kind of in the observe and report mode where they're just kind of watching maybe not interacting as much as some of the other officers, but um, they're just kind of watching to see what's going on. Um, but yeah, anytime there's any, any interaction with their, their security, it's been nothing but, nothing but professional. Uh, that goes for all of, the, all of their staff as well. We, we haven't had any, any issues with any of their staff. They've been more than, uh, more than cooperative a couple of times that we have to, had to look at the cameras. You know, they, they've gone above and beyond to, to make sure that we, we can see anything that we need to see. And um, there, there hasn't been any, any issues, any conflicts, um, nothing that a police officer has actually had to step in. And we just, with all of this that's happened in the logs, we've just observed it. We haven't had to have any interaction with anybody. So, so from my perspective, that's a, that's a positive thing. What's your perspective? It's pretty small inside. Um, and I'm just, I have the same, for every shift change, I say the same thing to the security guards, even though they've been there since day one. It's final call, when the last call is, how we're locking up, I tell them turn away people who are drinking, you know, just the same thing every time, seven o'clock, so it's just repetition, repetition, repetition. But, but your guys feel good about working with these guys? Yeah, they feel fine. Um, definitely good health at, at night when we're getting closed up. Um, I mean, personally, I think it's great. Um, sometimes there's cars on the lot, you know, just waiting for a pickup for, you know, 10 minutes or so, 15 minutes, we'll see headlights on, we'll wonder what's going on, cop will walk right out and, just check on way of picking up someone so it's fine I mean yeah so far so good um, just small inside I just say all day-to-day -day normal bar stuff so far so a little Christmas party to plan for on the 21st shameless plug there Jim has this a, it's been a problem with you getting detail to work there uh, not not as of this point we're, we're still filling all the details in-house we haven't had to go outside of the outside of the department as, at this point. Okay, and, and when a detailed person is there, is, is there a uh, uh, police vehicle there at the same yes. time? 
Yep. All the time that the detail is there, there's yes. a police vehicle. Yeah, and park right, right yeah, on the front. Yeah, park in the front. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Maybe one, yeah, one officer maybe, I don't know if it's all, most of them, there's yeah. a police detail, police car right outside all the time. So if there's no police car, that means there's no detail there? Um, there, there may have been one time, for whatever reason, the officer just had his car there. Um, but okay. normally it's taking the, the cruiser just in case we had to. If something happened, we'd have a place to secure an individual if we needed to, but it's usually parked right right in front of the, right the, front, right in front of the building there. Right up front, yeah. So, so if there's, a, the if there's a call, well, the detail person, detail officer there does not go. Your, your uh, part-timers are on call. We're on duty at the same well, time as the detail, right? If, if there's a detail there, the now, if there's a detail there, you also have part, you also have part timers there. Part timers working, not not there. Oh. Yeah, not always part timers. Yeah. Thursday nights, oh. our, our full time sergeant works. Time. Okay, so yeah. it's so your regular policing. Plan. Somebody's on duty. Yeah. Somebody's on duty while there's a detail officer in there. Yeah. Okay, that's what I'm asking. Okay, yeah. are, are you guys you guys historically have not been open on Wednesday nights, or you now open? Always been open, even under old ownership on Wednesday. They were closed up. Uh, Closed only Sunday, Monday. Yeah. They were open Tuesday through Saturday. Right now we're just Wednesday through Saturday. Right. Are you guys going to be open on Christmas Eve or New Year's Eve? Not open Christmas uh, Eve. Um, it's not sure if I'd be able. I'm trying to do a, a New Year's Eve party. I'm not entirely sure yet. It may only be open at night. I'm just staffing right now is kind of a problem. So, but I don't feel where the party is going to be. 95 people, major capacity. Right now it's like we're kind of breaking even every day. It's very manageable if I have extra security there, but I'm still not firm yet as far as uh, what the plan for is for New Year's. So you wouldn't consider New Year's Eve a special event um, for, for duty purposes? So if, if the actual definition of New Year's is that it's a special event, I sure. And as, 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 so my opinion as the operator, do I need police detail there that night? I don't. I feel really good about security staff in place there and if there's officers on duty that night, if there's anything that, that happens, I mean, we can call, but I just feel like security would be fine. Should be a pretty easy day. I don't think we'd be open the entire day. Right now, I'm still I'm scrambling to staff. So, um, yeah, haven't had any major rushes of people in through the doors yet. It's just been all pretty stable, even when we do crazy advertising. So. I don't know, I guess concern not related to, I guess, license or, or the security, but uh, since we've had one or two snowstorms, the visibility at the intersection is getting uh, blocked by your your snow piles in the parking lot. Several people in town have commented to that to me. Uh, it wasn't bad three days ago before we got this last snowstorm. You, you could people see over the pile. The no, no, the snow. Okay. Snow piles, you could see over the weekend, but as of yesterday or today, it built up higher and it's difficult to see. Uh, maybe the, I know you have to pile snow somewhere, maybe not so close to State Road. Mm -hmm. uh, leave eight or 10 feet clear maybe and, and you can pile next to it if you want. But okay. So you can, people can see. When they come to the stop sign, they look right, they need to see. Got it. Okay. Some cars coming, so. Yeah, you know, I mean, all due respect to Jim and I have disagreed about this for a long time. You have to already, even under normal circumstances, your car has to be beyond the stop sign to really see down the yeah. state road right. with the snow banks. It's even even, yeah. even worse. I don't know. further. Yeah. So from, from my from my perspective, I'm not saying the pile of snow right right by the road, but it actually forces people to stop because they can't it look at their packs in the parking lot. They can't look and say, oh, nobody's coming in and just cruise through. Even though they should stop. Anyway. They should stop, but the snow actually forces them to stop. So I I honestly don't have that big of an issue with it because people are actually part of stopping. It. Not all of it, but it yeah. Yeah. Just on the thing, right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, I will make the call and see if we can get it chopped up a little bit and just moved over. So. Alrighty, are you guys done? Yeah. Yeah. All right, thank you both. Thank you so much. You need to sign the license. That's coming up. Well, yeah, that's yep. That's the next stuff we have to do. Thank you. 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 Th
These are ones that we have, that the board voted to approve, uh, but they weren't prepared yet because we were still waiting on information. Um, and actually, this one we approved. This is the in-holder license for Waitley, and that one was just forgotten to be included. Um, yeah. And then this is for Tom's long dog and grill. These are ones that we already have voted on, but and this one is for Zenobis. And they can sell hot dogs? Oh no, sorry. No, not those guys. <laughs> I'm still open during the winter inside. See, yeah, yeah. So. I was over there for a little other day. And the two that the two that we deferred um, taking votes on were the castaway licenses. The yeah, for, the license. Which yeah. seemed like obvious reasons because it was, that did not it was not apparent to me that they were going to fulfill the Right. So I guess before the board is the renewal of these two licenses and they will require motions and votes. Which is a, um, We'll do the alcohol license first. Maybe we can take them together. I okay. Have, uh, have your motion? Motion. That's just you know, just a straight yeah. renewal, subject sure. to all the same conditions. All in favor? Aye. What you guys say? Motion. Second. Um, and then this is this is a. Uh, Renewal certification form for the ABCC. This is just licensing. So <coughs> to renew a license is disapproved, which we don't have any, so the okay. board would just sign under the local licensing authority. Actually, we could keep the paper cool. Okay. So it's just the front page stuff? Yep. But you can't just flip through that. I think they are, but yes, they are. I don't know if she wants to sign. Yeah, I mean, question, yeah. question in No, I, I don't want to sign. Oh, you don't want to sign? That's it for licensing. We should. Yay. Every, oh, okay. I'm sorry. One other thing. Um, Mark Betty stopped by the town offices and said that he did not want to renew his license. So. Oh, okay. Mark. Mark Betty. The one the call does it one all. Call does it all. The what? The, the one. one call does it all. It's going to become a marijuana retail. Oh, oh, the down state road. Yeah, yeah. Right. If we ever get any of those licenses to come yeah. through. Said he did not want to renew it, so yeah. that's the one that we on, on the spreadsheet yeah. that I given out. That's not. That's not out. actually going to happen. Yep. Okay. All right. On to new business. The um, contract for Town of Waitley DEP and WM Recycle America to participate in the recycling program at the Springfield Materials Recycling Facility. I have a very brief PowerPoint for you guys. Okay. Because um, I think it's a. Uh, yeah. So while while that's coming up, there was um, we'll an article break. in the paper, right? I noticed yes, that. I wrote them. Oh, you guys flip those lights. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. Okay. And I'm going to turn on the, the stoplight. Oh, that. I get these. I didn't know that were there. They are. Oh, am I in your way now? No, no. No, I meant the camera. Oh. I'm going to sit here. Oh, I'm going to check in a minute. You put that on there. Well, this was unplugged in. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, we have the lights for just a moment. Uh, you should be fine, John. Okay. About an hour. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> you serve the popcorn? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. This is compliments. And okay. um, Fran Fortino was not able to be here, but um, he came to that meeting with me at Kirkcog where we sort of got the lowdown on what's yeah. happening. So well, I think it should be maybe five minutes, four minutes. Pretty okay. quick. I like to I like to condense things. Sure. So quick background. And you know it'll help explain to people at home what's what's going on here. Wait, uh, Waitley's a dual stream community for recycling. That means the town collects 
um, um, collects and recycles paper in containers separately. And that's done at the transfer station. So you separate your paper, you separate your containers, plastics, glass, um, aluminum. So once we get a full container, the recyclable materials are shipped to the Springfield Materials Recycling Facility known as the MRF. The MRF is owned by the, uh, the state and it's operated by a company called Waste Management Recycle America LLC. Currently, um, so what are our costs or revenue? So we pay a hauling fee to ship the materials to the MRF. Um, last year, the, the Solid Waste Committee budgeted between five and $6,000 annually for, for those hauling fees. How much did you say? Between five and 6,000. Each bin for, for No, for total, the annual, for total, their annual budget. budget for okay. a recyclable hauling. Um, and right now under the current existing contract, the town is paid by the operator approximately $6 per ton over the scale for recyclables. So we get paid by the ton. Um, a lot's happened, so since 2018, the market for recycled materials has changed dramatically with the decision. Uh, the biggest impact was when China imposed very strict rules on ex accepting recycled materials. It really disrupted um, the recycling market. Um, and so far, the domestic market uh, really hasn't been able to compensate um, for the loss of demand, so it, it's harder to get rid of recycled materials. So there's there's more of them and so the price is, is lower, um, a lot lower. Um, at the at the meeting that Fran and I attended, put on by the Franklin County Solid Waste Management District, they were talking about there's indications that the domestic market is starting to pick up. There's some uh, paper recycling facilities that are coming online and um, Jan Amin, who's the, the director there, had sent an email yesterday that even I think in the past month, the average value of materials inque increased by something around 20%. So They failed to um, mention that in the reporter. <clears throat> they did. So hopefully we're trending in the right direction, but we're still in a pretty big hole, as, you, as you'll see. And the current contract that the town has, it's between, Mass D, it's between the town, Mass DEP, and the operator expires June of next year, June 2020. So the state went through a uh, competitive bid process to procure the next operator, and um, this, it was the winning uh, party, so to speak, was the was the same operator, Waste Management Recycle America LLC. Um, however, the contract terms are quite different, and that's mostly related to pricing. Um, so this is what the proposed contract is. The, the original bid was for a, a ten-year contract. But with the uncertainty in the in the recycling market, they negotiated it down to a five-year agreement, subject to two five-year extensions. But those extensions are on the on the consent or agreement of the three parties: the town, the state, and the operator. Um, under the proposed contract, we would continue to pay the hauling costs um, to ship recycled materials to the MRF, and um, according to uh, Fran. Whitley would continue to be a dual stream community, and there's there's actually a uh, monetary reason for that. The, the pricing, the processing fee that the town will now be paying is much higher if you're a single stream community. Um, so that's like $93 per year? No. Or per <clears throat> so, container? Or per yeah, product? so, so Whitley will pay mm -hmm. to the MRF operator a processing fee of ninety-three dollars and fifty cents per ton, per ton. to per ton. ship its recycled material to the MRF. Okay, and with roughly, two and a half percent yeah. escalator. And and in one container, say the container we filled the, the station there, how many tons does that tend to be? Um, a fraction of a ton. Do you happen to know? I want to guess. I I recall maybe five or six, but I'm not sure if that makes any sense. So I'm gonna okay. say no, that would be a question for Fran, I think. So, so Brian, am I reading this correctly based on my memory of the previous slides? The shipping fee has gone, or shipping slash pro. Shipping fee. The shipping, shipping fee, fee is, remains constant, but there's now a processing fee that is 15 times the shipping fee. Under the last contract, they paid us six dollars for our Right, I'm sorry. Right, yeah. but, we, but we did pay a hauling fee. 
we you, we right. will always pay a home. We will fee. always pay the home. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's sure. typical one. But then they never typical. said what the cost of the home fee cool. was per ton. Right. That, but our budget, it's roughly five to six thousand a year. Right. right. Yeah. So this ninety three fifty is a is a not an not a not, it's, it's an it's an addition. It's not just an increase. It's, it's totally yeah, it's, it's completely additional. We're not. That we, we have, didn't to, have to pay before. We have to pay to get rid of our recyclable materials now. That's, um, per, that's per ton. Per ton. Do we happen to know what uh, how much we pay per ton on non-recycled stuff? Um, I don't know exactly, but it's more. Um, again, if, if yeah, okay. Fran would have been here, okay, probably knows like that. I suspect. Hey, yeah, um, yeah, I would think so. Okay. So there's so no rev there's no revenue for the town now. Well, so, wait to the next one. So, so we'll start with the 93.50. So Whitley will earn a revenue share payment equal to the average market value for dual stream recycled materials. And this table's in the contract. So what this is, this is how the revenue share payment is calculated. So it's based upon the average market value of these materials. So. The, the third column, recovered material composition per ton. That's, a, that's a, an average of what a ton of recycled materials at the MRF consists of. Um, that's how, I don't know how they come up with that, but that's sort of okay. what, what they think so it is. So it's not necessarily what our town puts in, but it's what they get in general, right. so it's the next best yep. estimate. So calculating the revenue share payment, there's gonna be an index value, and that'll change every month based on how much? It's on the market. Based on the market. So, um, and then there'll be a uh, average market value. So this was, I believe this was November. This, is a, this was a slide that was shown at the presentation. Um, that's, that would have been from November 2019. So if this contract were in effect in November, then the lower right hand corner 2314 would have been our revenue share payment. So it's the 9350 minus the 2314 is we would end up the net cost for us to to recycle a ton of uh, paper or containers would have been $70.36. The um, net cost. The net cost. Plus hauling costs. Plus, plus hauling costs. And before it was just the hauling cost. Before, we would actually be paid a little bit of money. Right. Yeah. Right, so this is no longer a profit venture for the town. No. Well, it, compared to what? It, it, we're not getting that revenue, but if the alternative is to put it in a landfill, then we have to pay even more for that. Well, I, but that's what I'm curious about, Joyce. I'm curious what the cost of placing our material into a landfill or burning i mean what's the takeaway what's the cost of the town for traditional waste yeah and what's that comparison that's the side by side that i think it yeah. is going to be important yeah i asked i asked Fran about that on our car ride up and he said it was more and he thinks it's going to increase even more. i think he said it's going to increase even more yeah, yeah, that was in the article. So the waste is going to increase even more. Waste the disposal of waste is going to increase as well. Of course, the, the other option, if we're not making money on this, is is to charge people more for the bag or so, yeah, or a uh, sticker fee to, to cover expenses. At the at the at the at the end, uh, we have some ideas yeah. to kick around. Okay. okay. So just to just to clarify this or finish up about the the, the revenue share payment. So if the um, average market value is greater than the processing fee, you would think the town would get everything, right? We would get all the value, but that's not, that's not the case, of course. So it's split 70-30. So let's say the average market value was, was $103.50. So there's $10 above market. We would get seven and the operator would keep three. But of course, you would think that would be the same. If it goes negative, right? Of course not. No. Um, if the uh, average market value is negative, then we pay the whole, then we pay the difference. So if it costs the birth $10 to, if the average market value of all the materials is 
minus ten dollars, and we have to pay that extra ten dollars for time. Okay. Um, so, in this contract, uh, the MRF operator doesn't want glass. Um, it's yeah. pretty clear. So they're incentivizing the removal of glass um, from the container recycling stream by offering a five dollar reduction in the processing fee. So instead of ninety three fifty, it would be eighty eight fifty. Um, as long as the the uh, the container stream is, is substantially free of glass, substantially free isn't defined in the contract. It should be, and hopefully it will be by the time we sign it, but it's not. Okay. Um, so we would get that five dollar reduction. And they don't want glass. Do we have any idea why? Um, part of it is that it's it it's harder to deal with in terms of operationally because it shatters and it gets uh -huh. into all the other ones. Um, and then right now, if, if you look back at this chart, it's actually, yeah, it's actually minus, it's actually, oh. five, there's actually no value to glass right now. Plus um, it's 3201 for glass. Yeah. And a lot of these others are smaller than that. Yeah, 3201 in, I think. In parentheses. That's in parentheses. Oh, in parentheses. Oh, that's, that's negative. negative. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Got it. So it's not much value right now anyways. Um, so in, if we were to separate the, if, so we'd have to go to three containers at the transfer station. We have to we have them a separate glass container. Um, on average, according to the, the Franklin County Solid Waste Management District and the MRF, I guess the the average glass accounts for approximately fifty percent of the container tonnage. Mm -hmm. Glass is heavier, so it, it makes sense. Yeah. Um, so the Franklin County Solid Waste Management District is exploring uh, alternative facilities that. Um, makes that glass. They talked about there's there's this uh, facility in New York State. I guess I guess this is what they're doing in Southern New Hampshire. Is that they're they're, they're taking the recycled glass and they're able to turn it into fiberglass. Uh, oh. So there may be a so it's a to coordinate or something. Yeah. <laughs> but um, where does the um, yeah. where do, where do recycling facilities in in liquor stores take their glass? At five cents a pop, obviously. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. This little glass goes to right, the state but but where are they taking? I mean, th that must have a destination. What are grocery stores even? Yeah, I don't know. Right, I don't but, know but, it, but I, I, my point is, it all must have a destination. It can't be that hard to find. There are other there are other alternatives. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. but it may be that, that they'll find it easy. Right. It, it, but if you look right now, the average material value for glass is it's not negative. Not I mean, big. nobody. Right. Nobody wants it. Um, this was just a comparison. So this is based on 2018. The town recycled 65.58 tons of paper and 38.77 tons of containers. So 104.35. So under the existing agreement, we would have got a small amount of revenue. Um, the same tonnage under um, the proposed agreement, assuming we recycle glass, we keep mixing glass, we would be paying around um, $7,300. If we took out glass, we're going to save about $1,800 because it reduces the tonnage. Yeah. Um, I'm assuming it's a 50% split like they had said. Um, but that figure doesn't include the unknowns about how we dispose of or how we right. get rid of our glass containers. In that case, glass so, they, yeah. so that is going to total. We don't really know what what that final cost is. And presumably, you would only go to a separate glass if it kept the number somewhere either less than or in between, say the fifty five hundred and the seventy three hundred numbers up there. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um. So really, where are we now? I think we we kind of wait a little bit. The contracts need to be signed and delivered to Mass DEP by January thirty first, twenty twenty. So we have a little bit of time, not, not a lot of time. One of the, one of the uh, s slides that I skipped over was, let me go back quickly, this idea that so the one, two, the fourth line down, the contract rates are contingent on the commitment of 17,000 tons of recyclable materials from dual stream communities. And that's based on, on last year's tonnage. But they need 
they need to have 17,000 tons of recycled materials guaranteed. Uh -huh. So that means most of the most of the communities need to sign on to this. From the 26 cities and towns in Franklin County, or whoever from from the from the MRF users, right? Yeah, MRF users who who use that facility in Springfield. Who use that facility? Correct. So if that, if if, uh, if some towns opt out, opt out, or if they go with the no glass, that tonnage number will go down. Yeah, it's interesting. The question was brought up and that 17,000 this year refers to refers to uh, 2018 tonnage. So they use which a 2018 amount, glass. which would include glass. But then the same language is applicable to the extension from five years from now. So if everybody cuts out glass, you're gonna lose what, a, 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 a quarter of your tonnage. So you're not gonna have 17,000 anymore. You might have something less. So, so what happens if, if we don't hit the 17,000 tons? Nobody knows. Presumably they don't have to. Presumably they don't have to. Um, I bet they'll they don't have to provide those, those, those rates. They'll accept the processing fee, but they'll, they'll keep the revenue share payment. <laughs> yeah. Presumably that's what they would be able to not do the revenue share. Um, but I don't know that we would not have to pay the processing fee. I mean, we don't know. I think the contract is something, there should be some understanding of what happens there because I, I, I am worried that if we find a solution to the glass, which as John points out, um, there, there may be a solution out there. We should be able to find it soon. Um, if that glass tonnage goes away, then we might not make that. So we need to know what happens if the 17,000. Yeah, I, I that question. That question's being asked. Yeah, so Mass DP. Yeah. So that's so that good. That, that the answer may be on its way. Yeah, Mass DP um, is not yeah. providing an answer yet to the towns. Right, and then I guess the second threat, on, based on that number, is do if a lot of towns found another uh, place like Casella, you say, or USA Recycles, might be facilities we should, or, or the Franklin County will check into. Yep, and that's my understanding that's happening now. That's happening now, okay. So at our next meeting on January 8th, there may be more information. I would hope so. Cause um, this, that we might be, it might help us make some decisions. Yeah. But, but if, if we're gonna take out glass, we're gonna need a separate container and, and area to do that, yep. Yep. which is gonna be what, one while and one time expense, yeah, least, I guess. Yeah, but, um, the container's about $5,000. Right, yeah. Okay. okay. It, but yeah, yeah, but it'd be hard to fit nice. another. Yeah, the fan was talking another about proper that. container. Yeah, yeah. We'll be at the end, maybe between the two. I think, well, depends. Yeah. Right. Yeah. How this they actually is a disaster on so many different levels, not the least of which it is about 15 years steps backward in terms of our recycling habits. Who negotiated this? I mean, I, I know you don't know, Brian, but this well, is. I, 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 I don't. I know who negotiated it. It, it was it was Mass DEP. It was the MRF advisory board, and it was MRF representatives from communities. My understanding, and I don't know this firsthand, but that the fact that the fact that we received revenue for recycled materials was was an oddball across the state. Well, they're making money. I mean, it... that, that's just what I was told. It's that in it, it, part of this is part of this is, is based on the I think what happened globally in the recycling market. I think it's a maybe we got a little too fat and happy about sending our recyclables to China and didn't really think about the, the consequences of what happened if right. we couldn't do that anymore. But, mm -hmm. Can I just interrupt for a minute? Um, but come on up so that we can see you. Uh, it's just, I just want to ask, if we get bumped from our room, our regular meeting room, can you give a heads up in case we have a public hearing or something that needs more space oh, yeah. than in the small room? Yeah. Okay, just check. Yeah. Thanks. Of course, the other option, it, it, you know, if we, if we don't recycle in Waitley, the, well, right now there's other places that take would take it anyway. They don't ask as long as you want to recycle. I mean, you can say, right. go to Northampton, you can recycle all you want in Northampton. 
there's a recycling place on uh, off of Route 10. Anybody go there and recycle? I mean residents. Resident. Well, I don't know if they even check. Well, do they check? Well, I mean, they, I mean, individu individuals. Individuals could. Right, right, you're talking about right, individuals. They individuals. They don't, they don't check with the They check. They obviously have no. a bag for trash disposal. Yes. Yeah. Oh, they don't always even check for that. But yeah. Well, sure. Yeah. But no. I think you're right. Any individual, but I don't think we could take our container over there and say, "Oh, hey, let us put our." ton of, no, right. of recycles into your container. No, but, uh, yeah. but if people in town went somewhere else to, for, to recycle. Yeah, but my guess is, I, if, if people started to do that, you would see barriers set up very quickly. I, I, I agree. And, and, and also, I don't think people would go that far. I think we would start finding the, the find more trash bags in the woods. Right. You know, I think we, we, we need to take care of our solid waste. The, the solution is to, again, like we failed to do well in 2014, revisit the bottle bill because the bottle bill would take care of a lot of this because that alleviates the challenge for the town and puts it on the bottlers where it belongs to some level. You know, we, don't, we don't get anything for the, the bottle bill. Uh, that's, um, the, the point is we wouldn't have the cost either. People would have to be responsible for taking their 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 bottles and cans, including now Gatorade and all those kinds of things, to places like Liquors Forty Four or wherever, and and then the town isn't stuck with the cost of hauling and and, and tonnage, right. because it's on the on the feet at, at the feet of the bottlers where it belongs to begin with, because it's cost of doing business for the bottlers. They should make a ton of money, but they should pay a portion of that to, to take care of our environmental challenges, and they're not. But that's my soapbox. All right. That's your one for this meeting, John. So, future considerations, and Freddie touched on this a little bit. I mean, if the town chooses to go with the MRF, the question is does it make sense to separate and recycle costs separately? There's con container costs, shipping costs, unknown processing fuel revenue, and we want to make sure that it's cost effective to do that. Um, and if we have to pay for the increased costs, um, there's different ways to do it. It can be absorbed into the transfer station budget, um, increase into the trash bag fees, so the pay is, it would be an increase in the pay as you throw. Uh, Fran had mentioned that it may not have been increased in it's a long a time. Yeah. Um, I believe you mentioned that there's not currently a sticker fee um, to use the transfer station. Um, Franklin County Solid Waste Management District said, mentioned that you know some places do an annual recycling surcharge. Um, and we also get money from the state as um, part of the recycling dividend program funds. So that's communities. Communities who qualify for those funds have adopted policies that encourage recycling and their practices encourage recycling and things like that. And our revenue for that is around $4,900. At least in uh, 18, it was $4,900. The current okay. balance in that, that's a, that's a special revenue account. Well, um, if it's, um, if this has been happening for more than two years, then uh, it seems to me this means we've been using this money for something else. We use it towards use it. this increase in fee. What is it we're not paying for? Right. So it, it might not be that all of that's not going to be available unless, because there'll be some other cost that it is covering now that it wouldn't cut. Yeah, I can, I think they are using yeah. that money to. I got to say, I like, uh, the, I, I like it better to increase the fee for pay as you throw rather than charging an annual recycling surcharge. Yeah. I like that a, a lot better to kind of encourage because the pay as you throw is is more costly. Um, and, and if people are going to say, oh, I'm not going to recycle, I'm going to pay as you throw, then that's got to really reflect what the cost is. No, those, uh, and you're right, it, it's been $2 for 30 years. Oh, since I whatever. can't remember. I, um, but the bags just got smaller, too. They did. I haven't noticed. Oh, I, don't, it, I don't know. I don't know. Well, I, I, I think I heard that. No, they definitely did, because I've used the same trash can oh, for, I see. for yeah. about 30 years. Yeah. And suddenly, it doesn't fit on the trash can anymore. So it yes. got smaller. Yes, trash it out really good. Right. Well, it breaks before it's right, you know. <laughs> but isn't that kind of a, 
a separate issue by itself, the, the trash. Getting rid of the trash. You got trash and you got recycling. Mm -hmm. And and I guess there's a there's a fee for trash. We're not we're not talking about getting rid of trash, are we? Where's that fee and are we is that just an expense that we pay to get rid of trash? I don't think I understand your question. Trash is the, the garbage that fits in a bag. If it's right. in a bag, everybody throws in a dumpster. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, We're not talking about eliminating that service, no. No, that's not recycling. No. That's not no. recycling. Not, okay, so what is, what is the cost of that service? Yeah, it does Just because your increased yeah. bag fee is related to, to that service, not to recycling. Although it may, I don't know if people look at it if you're gonna if people are, aren't recycling and throwing in a trash bag, if you increase trash bag fee, they may say, well, now maybe it's time to sort out recycling. Yeah, if you're paying pay, more but, for the bag, but. But it'll cost less, it costs us less if you recycle. Per ton, it costs less to recycle, so right, we would but, still want people to recycle. But what, if, but so for the, the trash that we uh, we collect and, and, and it's all the way, I assume there's there's no income on that. No, that's all that expense. No cost. It's, no. it's getting even more expensive now. And what's what's our cost for that? What are we paying? How much for that? Yeah, so the, that I the, that. the I question to ask. Well, but and it's a question that needs an answer. Yeah, because, does the does the bag fee yeah. does the bag fee cover it? Right. And if yeah. it doesn't, there's a good argument. And I would argue that even if it does cover <clears throat> that, if we're going to raise a fee to raise it on the more costly item so that we can encourage the less costly item and the which is also better for our environment um, and and i mean the trend is that the re it looks like recycled materials may be bouncing back maybe not to where they were before right. but they it, it may get up to a, a more advantageous kind of steady state um, if, if because because that's really what the markets are supposed to do, right? When recycled materials are cheap, then people have a, a business plan that can make money uh, using those recycled materials. Uh, I, I mean, I even struggled with the five-year window because we signed this, we signed on to this, and what happens if the recycled market really bounces back in two years? Then. Well, then we, we've race. got that means we got to share with the share with the we share it with the MRF, and the MRF gets better if that's really a part but, of our contract. But our contract's five years. They're not, the waste management's going to say, "Man, you guys signed the contract." But the offset will. The offset will. The revenue share payment will increase. Yeah, the revenue share would increase. Yeah, yeah. so it'll be those price fifty well. minus. I don't know, fifty dollars. Uh, you know, right. fifty dollars. Then we're only paying forty, yeah. whatever, forty three something. Though. Right. Now, if if it's if different. we if we collect. The uh, deposit uh, containers that have deposit on it is that a well? We collect them there, but we don't save them. It goes to other agencies. Is that a, a, a big amount if we started collecting that? And, well, you'd have to have some way of uh, cashing it in, I, I, I guess. I understand, but, but yeah. Oh, sorry. But is that? We should ask. I, I know how much of that is, is, is deposits. Now, my understanding regarding the, the nickel bottles that they yeah. collect there, they generally give them to a nonprofit. And right. the nonprofit, there's a lot of work that has to be done on those to get them to a place where you can actually get the nickel. Okay. Um, so if we were to do that in house, um, any profit we make would be made up for by having to pay someone to do, to do yeah. that. And uh, because okay. it's so labor intensive. Um, so, so that I, I agree, it's a possible source of revenue, but we're not necessarily in a good place to capture that as a profit, given the cost. Okay. Well, yeah. I get it from a point. It's a big It's killing your incentive to, to recycle, and the reality is only thirty-eight percent of the country yeah. recycles already. Well, that's what I want to. I don't want people to look at this and think, oh, I shouldn't recycle. Right, right. Because it's still cheaper to recycle than it is to throw. And and I think that's, I wrote to the recorder today, signed it, Selectman Town of Wigley. Um, 
we, th that headline should not have been cost of recycling goes through the roof. It should have been cost of recycling nice. is going up, but it's still cheaper than not recycling. Right. right. And so I, I challenge them to make that the next headline. Um, because you had to, you had to like go deep into the second page of the article before you found Fran's quote that said, hey, but it's still actually cheaper to recycle than it is to throw away to a landfill. And so that's, that's my soapbox for me. It would be a really lot cheaper if those bottlers would actually mm -hmm. oh, carry their cost burden. Yeah, I agree, but like you said, if, if, I think the message ought to be, no, recycling is still better. And the cost might be going up, but it's not going up as much as they go. Okay. So, okay. So you'll keep us posted, Brian, on this Yeah, disaster. so we don't have to sign anything today, but right. we've got some questions on your plate. And I look mean, forward to to hearing from Fran and or whoever has the information on those. Yeah, I mean, there's also a, a question as to whether the, the annual town meeting article that we passed at the last annual town meeting to enter into an agreement for this is, is adequate. Um, but we'll find that out and we'll send it to town council. Um, okay. That was a one concern. Um, Fancy County Solid Waste Management District, their idea was that everybody signs it and gives it to them and they can hold it off till the till January, whatever, you know, January twenty yeah. eighth to see what happens, but I'm not really comfortable with doing that because Quite honestly, once it's signed, it's it's, right. it's signed. It's not necessarily that Pickens kind of waste management held on to it. It doesn't matter. It, 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 I'm not comfortable shred. with that. Um, I, I would also be curious to see a cost comparison. And maybe we've done it in the past, and I don't recall, but what the costs are for curbside pickup. Private hall, private hall, private hall across, across town. town. Because you can make a strong people. argument. It's a lot more environmentally friendly than the way we do it now, because you don't have. 700 cars or however many, however many cars visit the transfer station on a weekly basis yeah. burning fuels etc yeah. um, and you also perhaps get even better recycling rates with with curbside than you do bringing it to a transfer station i don't know the answer to that but those cost factors and the rate of recycling would be interesting statistics to to have yeah. so we can really do a, a, a good comparison you said some towns have done that well, I was I was on. Um, oh, what's the what's the company that just bought two soap trucks? Oh. Uh, we see it all the time. They're, they're Amherst truck, Troy. Right? Amherst Troy. No, no. no. USA Res. Yeah, it's like USA Recycles USA or something. Yeah. Um, yeah, I that was they have contracts the for Irving, Shootsbury, and one other town. It was listed on their website. Isn't Shootsbury so a town we compare ourselves to? Could be. Shootsbury, yeah. certainly, yeah. Yeah, so maybe that's where what those into. costs are. Well, there's, I know that there's that new community being built in South Deerfield that has private company collecting. I don't know who pays, whether it's a developer or not, but. Yeah, but the difference there is you have such, you have such a, a, a dense, dense, dense population. Area, right. It's easy, but, it, but across the mileage we have and the rural landscape that yeah. we have, the costs, costs yeah. are gonna be higher. They, they just are. But Shootsbury's a very good comparison. Right? Yeah, yeah. We compare ourselves to them for a few things, don't we? Okay. Is there anything else on that item? Should can we go to I think we go to six B. Yeah. Uh, discuss to whether to apply for a conservation assistance for small communities grant to update the Waitley open space plan. Um, what would be the downside? Or what would be the upside? It sounds like we get to apply for more grants if we have an open space plan that is up to date. I think it would be more competitive, yeah. yeah. It will be more competitive. Um, yeah. That's my understanding, too. Yeah, and it's pretty much guaranteed money, uh, and we are applying for the other portion of that cost to update the open space plan through community preservation. Yeah. Uh, and there's no reason to apply for community preservation unless we're also doing the yeah. state grant, so. Do we need a motion? I think it would be, be good, yeah. Motion. Okay, and move that we apply for the Conservation Assistance for Small Communities Grant. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, good. So I'll ask for your signature once I, at some point in the near future. Okay. All right. 
Our next item is to discuss the public comments received at the Chestnut Plain Road Sidewalk Plans Open House meeting uh, last week. Yep. Which I, I went to for a short period of time. Mm -hmm. um, and towards the beginning. Yeah. So I think maybe, maybe we have around 20 to 25 people that came through um, throughout the whole two hour period. Um, we received uh, five emails with comments. I tried to group them as I, when I summarized them here. We'll, we'll do the easy ones first. Um, yeah, we'll pull that up. group them in, in four different categories here. Um, in terms of the expanded parallel parking in front of the library, that seemed to generate probably the most most uh, input or most comments. Um, and a lot of it had to do with whether it made sense to do angled parking or, or pulling parking. There was a request from uh, in a butter who, who lives at 200 Chestnut Plain Road that that the parking just be located in front of the library um, and not necessarily in front of, in front of Excuse me. their residence. Um, but I mean, I guess the uh -huh. really, I think people who were there understood the need for the additional parking, uh, but. We're just wondering if it could be, if it made sense to have a pull-in parking, either angled or 90 degrees to, uh -huh. um, to have it like, to have it that way. Um, I don't know if the board had any thoughts about that. Obviously, it wouldn't be a 10-foot widening. It would be a, I don't know, I'd have to check the engineer, but 18-foot or 15-foot or yeah. widening, and then it would have cars backing out onto Chestnut Plain yeah. Road. Um, but in some instances, that could slow traffic down. Well, I, I did notice a, a day or two later, I went by in the evening, and, and way the end, cars were parked diagonally. Di on a diagonal. In that in space? That, on that grass that area. Probably, yeah, so so they, they learned where to park or figured it they, out. Yeah, yeah. It, it, probably all it takes is one person to one pull one. in that way and the rest right. follow. Was the oh, town yeah. hall out full? No, there was, no but there was a few cars in the town hall, but it wasn't full. Right. And I assume all them, I don't know, a dozen cars that were there, maybe were, were way the end. Right. So. Or maybe when they arrived, the front part of the town hall lot was full. No, or been. something like that. No, I, I went to the tree lighting and it was kind of confusing there because they pushed the snow back <coughs> and it looked like you could pull in. But people didn't know, do I go diagonal? Yeah. Do yeah, I go parallel? Still, yeah. So that was, that was a little kind of a confusing um, thing. Well, is, is it being proposed to be a hard surface? Yes. Pavement, so you could stripe it, I guess. Yeah. I think the idea would be that it would be striped right. if it of course in the winter market, time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then you need some guidance signs probably. But yeah, to yeah. So how, many, so how many parking spots would this be? Um, I, I think it depended on whether it was parallel or... Yeah, I personally think there's I mean, if we've got the space, let's use that space as efficiently as possible and, you know, pull in is pretty efficient. Um, I think that it, it makes a little more sense to try and, you know, and, and, so you don't have to necessarily do the whole road, right? You, to get a similar number of cars, you've got to go about one and a half times uh, as much frontage, so to speak, and it's kind of, I don't know. It's a, I, I just I feel like that's going to be a better option. I know it, it goes in deeper, and uh, and uh, if it's a person's own frontage, even if it's town owned, then they'll they'll really notice that. Right. Um, so it might be nice to be able to keep it just in front of town owned properties. Uh, I think the only one really being proposed is in front of the library right now. Right. But presumably that same kind of guidance could go for in front of the cemetery if we were to decide more parking there or or other places a lot of the land on that particular stretch of road is is town well, if, you, if you look at the frontage on the map i think it's like 180 feet when i recall from the front of the library itself not going towards uh, the other right. property owners so if you go 10 feet it's possible i don't know 15 18 cars there maybe diagonally. 
Why are we talking diagonally instead of 90 degrees? I'm not, I'm not talking diagonally. I'm saying 90 well, degrees. Well, 90 degrees. Well, you need at least 9 foot. 9 foot is... Uh, well, that, that's, that's, that's fine. Space. I just... Right. Yeah. I wasn't talking about diagonal. I just thought I heard the words. Oh, that was suggested. Yeah, yeah 45 degrees. Uh, what's, the, what's the difference? 1.4. Well, okay. That's the difference. <laughs> also, yeah. you you for practical purposes. For practical purposes, it's going to mean fewer cars per unit right. of frontage. Right. So why would you, limit again, limiting right. the numbers because if you have that filled up, you're still going to have a perpendicular parking up and down the street yeah. anyway. I think that no there, there, some, some people might argue that it's easier to back out of a diagonal space and than a perpendicular one. Some, I'm saying, so you're looking at me like I've got three heads. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying you know, some right people, uh, but if you, when you pull out, that means you always have to go in the direction you were originally going. Yeah, so you right. have right. to go up and come back. So you back. have to go somewhere and turn around and come back. and. Right, which, you know, so are you going to do it north or south? So the people going north are going to have to turn around to go south. To, you know, it's just, oh my but gosh. I think the, the, the bigger difference is going to be the cost of what Keith or whatever we build there. Because if you go, if you go uh, perpendicular parking, you're probably going to have to go 15 feet, 18 feet at least. If you go right. diagonal, maybe only 12. So you've got six foot less of pavement possibly there. Right. The cost but, of doing okay. six feet more. Versus how many more parking spaces are you going to gain I think by that? What, however many, if, you know, for per parking place, it's the same amount of area. No, Although I think for diagonals, you diagonal. actually might have to pay more per car for a diagonal because the, of the way the well, car fits can, in. Can I suggest this is kind of... Uh, this, so anyway, this is the, this you, is the you're the one who asked the question. Yeah. You no, asked I mean, the question. And I'm regretting it, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 So, but, so anyhow... The cost of, of so one other comment. Yeah, it's got a more The general it's concept great. is that is that the board would be inclined to consider some type of pull-up parking only in front of the library, or no? Yes. Only. I am inclined to consider that, yeah. That and may, maybe also, well, I think we should wait on the in front of the cemetery until we figure out what's going to happen yeah. with the center school, because that, that could yeah, be a great. combination right. thing. Yeah. yeah. The, the, other, I said the other thing that, that's being discussed, and I know it was at this meeting, and I guess they didn't put a sticky on it. I made a comment before is to expand the parking in, in the library, uh, the cyber library, and, and I hear the library trustees are talking about that. Huh? They may come up with a capital improvement project to find it or on the side to it. next to it. Well, as a minimum, they have to, they have to address the handicapped parking issue. Uh, either signing or striping or, or whatever, uh, but they're also looking at going east uh, and adding more parking spaces. Ugh, I, I mean, to the side, that's fine, but... Well, there's, there's nothing there, it's, it's all open, it, right? Right, right it's now. open, it's beautiful, it's pristine. Well, there's, there's... <laughs> uh, I know that they're looking at that and, and whether there's a, how much of a need there is for it or not, or what they're coming up with to justify that, I don't know. Okay. They, they've asked somebody to come up with a cost, I guess, to, to do that. And, and, the, and the other thing is, is to uh, put a sidewalk from the, some, from the library to, to the town hall, the more direct, rather than going down the driveway along the road and then back up. Yep. Uh, yeah, that was... I think the library cool. trustees are looking at that as well and how that ties in with their sidewalk. The only thing I've heard, it may not be ADA compliant. In other words, because of the grade, or they may have a narrower width one to connect that. But you would have the one by the chestnut plane to be the ADA compliant. But the other one may not be, too. Because you may have to uh, go around some trees, tree roots that are there. I'm not quite sure of that. But. OK, I think we can talk. So that was being that. discussed. I've, I've heard that, yeah. yeah, that's being discussed by library trustees. That sidewalk in the park. Yep. Yeah, that was one of the one of the things I had noted. Um, that 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 <coughs> issue, the parking in front of the library. In terms of crosswalks, um, yeah. some people have said the one the, the one furthest north. Um, yeah. Some people said we should leave it. Some people said we should get rid of it. 
Um, some people said it's too dangerous. Some people said that it's the only place that it makes sense to have it. Um, I mean, are we comfortable leaving it to the engineer to make a recommendation as to whether that's safe or not? Personally, I think it should be to the south side of the Waitley Inn parking lot. So essentially at Haydenville Road and going across there. That's my personal belief. We're not talking about No, I meant the one. Um, no, you want to take it from the far north end of the project and put it on the, the far Adams. south end? On the north project? side, by the center school. In front of Adams. Oh, I, I want to put it on the south end. We're talking about this one here. You're saying take this one and put it all the way down here. I'm saying there should be one down. There's one down there somewhere anyway. Yeah, it goes right oh, across right. to should, the That should move south, personally. I, yeah, I thought this, the something south of there is on the next, the next set of sidewalks. The next part of our complete streets. Wait, no, but that's, that's that that. Well, I mean, again, we're talking about, we're not talking about, yeah. how do I say this? We're not talking like it's Boylston Street in Boston. It's not that crowded. So I, I don't want Chestnut Plain Road littered with a crosswalk every 10 feet like the D line is in Boston. Well, if you move, put it the way it's shown here, you wouldn't have that other one closer to the intersection. It's one or the other, I think. It's not both. Right. And, that, uh, and, and, and I think the way it's shown here is, is where people walk, how they use it today. And I think that's important to decide on the location, how they're going to use it. If you put it by, by the intersection, they're gonna walk right across the street if they park at the way they, at the town hall. Or vice versa. People, well, that's 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 true. That's how they're gonna walk. They're not gonna go in front of the monument. Supposedly, whatever's whatever's there, we don't know yet where that sidewalk is gonna be, and well, in the cross by the intersection. Okay, that's fine. But the other one on the north end, uh, by in front of uh, Hannah's house, uh, I think that was one that. People were saying either eliminate or move closer, move yeah. to, to the south. Yeah. Some yeah. Feedback on right. Yeah. To get away from that intersection. I, I, I think Just a lot of that visibility. Right. Yeah. But a lot of that's really driven by what happened with the center school building as well. I think. Right. Well, it may or may not because that's not on center school property. I mean, no, but it's but it's pretty darn close. Yeah. However. Whatever happens in center uh, school, it's probably not going to knock down the entire hill so that it's yeah. not that it's going to all of a sudden be visible. Right. The, the, the issue there is visibility. That right. as you're coming around yeah. this corner, it's hard to see that crosswalk until you're on top of it. And same thing here because of the well, the, yeah, the slope the, coming uh, off North Street. Right. That either way, it's going to be. Yeah. And, and also, when you're at that intersection, you're looking for people coming on the other two. Right where the roads are merging. So having uh, the, side, the crosswalk right in front of the place where the two roads merge may not be the best choice. Then having it, giving yourself a little more space. And even if it were just moved to the other side of uh, uh, Hannon's property or something like that, that might be a reasonable solution. An engineer might suggest that. But they might, but I, I think to, to Fred's point about how it's currently used, I think people cross at, the, at that point by the center school now. I think that's that where they know. naturally cross. That, that might be true, yeah. So it, it, to, 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 to not try to recreate muscle memory. And yeah, it also- for, Yeah, for going to the cemetery? It would also, or, or just crossing the street, that's just where they cross the street there, yeah. uh, when, when, they're, when they're walking to and from town. But um, it would also, if you had the crosswalk there, it might encourage cars to slow down there which you know it's only a yield and you see close yeah. accidents a lot anyway yep so so what if i ask the engineer about yeah safe i'll, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll ask her okay. whether she thinks that it's yeah. sort of safety standards and then the other aspect of the crosswalks and singles is is from what i gathered some of the um whatever they call them the, the crosswalk panels with the yeah they have really really bright flashing LED lights, lights um, which I got that we don't really want those so that I if want there, them if there was if there I was those they want them kind of a little bit lower impact lower impact is that fair this is going to kill some the ones rural, that are this is going to kill the rural optic 
Well, okay. they, would, they would have to be motion active. They would have to be. I mean, while yeah, they're, they they're should only be user activated when user activated. The user hits the button. Right. Is there any way to just put it in the street as 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 lights submerged in the pavement? I've seen them in some places. There's some with there's some at Wilson. So we don't have signs Amherst. all over the place. And well, we can look do, into do that. we need do we need lighting to identify? I don't think so. Uh, I don't know what the or a signing to say that. I don't know. I don't know what the manual on. No. Traffic, whatever GCD. control devices is yeah, these GCD. days. But yeah. I mean, is a preference to not have them? I, I, I would maybe. But there certainly don't put was them in one the, person at the meeting who was very adamant about it. But there were other people at the meeting who said this is actually not a bad idea because it's new crosswalks, especially, and it's it's for safety, right? And they're not on all the time. They're only on. Somebody activates the button and crosses the street. Right. No, I would I would think that don't put it, don't put them in initially and see how people use it and whether people are stopping for pedestrians oh, out there. Are right. you want to be the pedestrian that no, they're they they they, going to stop for? It? If it's not an issue, or if there isn't many pedestrians how, to begin with, then well, how many pedestrian heads do we have to have? Yeah, you know, know, how, many 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 how many pedestrians do we have there either? Do we know that? Right. I, no, I'm just saying, you're saying we should wait and see if anybody gets hurt and then do something about no, it. And I well, think that's probably not I, our best. I actually think that, that it, should be, no. it should be a motion sensor as somebody approaches the, the, the crosswalk personally as opposed uh -huh. to button signs and everything. You know, let's live in the 21st century. And if someone approaches from the sidewalk entrance to the crosswalk, then it automatically activates. It doesn't get activated by every car that goes by. It gets activated from the sides. Again, it, it, if we want to preserve the rural landscape of the town, we have to think creatively about how 21st century technology can help us. And I think it's it's also important what's on the pavement. How are we going to how are they going to delineate that? Just paint the paint paint markings, or are they doing yeah. some kind of uh, they raised yeah. uh, pavement something? Uh, they don't. The plans are not. Have any raised? Nothing raised, or yeah. just a pay, payment mark. I, I, I believe so. Yeah. I really okay. like what they have in Florence, where it's raised and the sidewalk comes out, so that people have to slow down. And that's one of the things we talked about under the when we were doing the the plan was that when you put in these crosswalks, you can put in structures that will actually cause drivers to drive more slowly. Uh, it's much more effective than putting a speed limit sign up. Yeah. I mean, you know I me. Mean? I, I, I'm all for having the dips in the roads all over town. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I, I would be interested in those kind of safety features I know, myself. It's, it's a major thoroughfare, and you got a good amount of truck traffic going through there. And, and they might go a little slower. And I would hate to reduce the, the width of the road with trucks going by and school buses coming. Same time, uh, well, you don't you reduce it to a one lane us. road well, or anything, no, but no, you so have something see. that's visual that that comes in so that you slow down enough to stay on your side of the road. You don't reduce the road to a, with that trucks can't get by. No, but I, that, I think there, there is a requirement for uh, pavement markings. Oh, mark. I, I agree, the pavement Marking should be marked certain, where the where I think engineers should. Give us right. suggestion. Give us some. Yeah. yeah, I know. Okay. And Rather than us, right. we're experts on this. And I think, I don't know that we need to talk about winter maintenance tonight. <laughs> One or two yeah. hours. And yeah. I feel like we should probably, I should gather some more cost for comparison before we really have that discussion. Okay. Yeah. I don't think we're going to come to a resolution. Yeah, we won't come to a resolution at that, and it's not. And it, there, there are some of these comments are at looking for more information. Like, what do other small towns do? Set towns of ours, towns that we compare ourselves to, mm -hmm. um, who have sidewalks. What, uh, what do they do? Yeah. Um, and that sort of thing. Right. I mean, the one difference is that we are a small town that is a pass through. Mm -hmm. A lot of small towns aren't a pass through, but we are a pass through. Right. Yeah. So, well, like Williamsburg might be a good comparison there, also. Bigger town, uh, bigger town. The bigger, yeah, but they're they're a town we often compare ourselves to. So.
<coughs> okay, so it sounds like overall the event was a success in pulling in comments. It was, yeah. 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 So I mean, in terms of next steps, um, Keith and I were going to give some feedback to the engineer based on these and based on your comments tonight, and um, we'll have her um, draw up a final plan. Um, and we'll have a board look at it, and we'll hopefully get this out to bid um, probably January, early February. Be in line to get this done in the in the spring. Spring. Is, is, is this going to be a lump sum contract or, or linear foot? Um, I think Keith's, I, Keith's idea was to do a linear foot. Linear foot. Okay. Um, that way, if we have extra money, we might be able to go. You might be able to extend it a little longer. A longer, okay. Like on the well, west if it's high, you could, well, if it's you could reduce it. Reduce yeah. by the cemetery, maybe, or somewhere. Yeah, we yeah. would have to think Look about at that. Where, yeah. Okay. Town administrator updates. Brief. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> Say expanded. 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 I think that's what I said. Right? Um, this is a proposed budget schedule, uh, budget meeting schedule. Um, you can let me know your comments if you want by email. Um, but this is on the green would be finance committee only. Uh, finance committee only meetings. They be by themselves once in a while. The yellow ones would be joint meetings, and the blue ones are are regularly scheduled meetings, assuming they are. Um, we keep them on the second and last Wednesdays. So the blue ones could obviously change. Those are what um, you guys want to meet. Yeah, but oh, okay. But but the finance ones are on Tuesdays. It looks like. Yeah, they prefer Tuesdays. They prefer Tuesdays. Okay. Tuesdays are not great I, for you. Well, I will I will make sure that I'm not teaching the Tuesday four to five section. I'll see if I make sure see if my uh, my colleague will take that one and I can take the Thursday. Gotcha. What what time are we looking at? I'm sorry, they're looking to be at six. Find it with the joint with finances mm -hmm. yeah. at six. Um, I have uh, assessors meetings Tuesdays, but I uh, don't know which Tuesdays yet. Okay. Are you looking at how far apart here? Well, you got two weeks apart. Well, no, 18 to 25, it's one week. Okay. And yeah, we were hoping, we were, for the most part, we originally talked about it the 18th, is, we were going to do the school as the 18th, and then that's school vacation week. So oh. we had to get great attendance. So we switched. We had I talk, got in touch with Darius, and the, the 25th is better. But sort of looking at the schedule, I think it makes sense to, to keep that meeting there. My only question, I'm not sure I'll be able to do the 10th just because of stuff. Yep. Um, but are we going to try to? The 24th of March is Finance Committee voting on <clears throat> budgets, capital projects, etc. Yep. Personally, I think we should be knowing ahead of that where the tea leaves are going in terms of what, whether we need to iron out differences ahead of that rather than at the end of all this great communication splitting up and saying, all right, we're now we're going to vote mutually exclusive of. of, of, of each other. Um, yeah, I almost yeah. wonder whether we should be voting on these projects, the budget, etc., simultaneously. If we're all going to be there, so then if one doesn't approve it and the other does, and we can say, okay, how can we change this so that we can all agree on something rather than saying, okay, you, you know, we're going to agree to disagree. Let's let's. Yeah, it's just my suggestion. I, I can ask. I can ask Paul about that. It does have a meeting after, if needed, a joint reconciliation meeting. Uh, it looks like it's two weeks after that. Yeah. There's that in yeah, there. Yeah, built that in just in it, case there differences. As yeah. things have gone in the past, we often are getting closer and closer. As we get more information, we get to a, a point where we kind of all understand. Uh, what's likely to happen and then we still have that time between March 10th and April 7th. 
I mean, I, I think on the on the tenth, I'll, well, I should have a pretty good idea where the finance committee is headed, and then we'll regular board meeting would be the eleventh. We could talk about that, and I could communicate to the. I would just think, just like to have that opportunity to say, "Come on, you know, one last, right. yeah, one last dance." And I mean, the twenty fourth, it, it it doesn't necessarily have to be. If we don't think it's going to work finance only, then just show up. We're, we're we just, can show up. That's right. The public meeting. <laughs> but no, but, we, but, I, but I'm, thinking, I'm I'm saying we should all vote at the same time. Well, but because even with the, the the joint meetings, I'm not sure in the past. Who was voting? I, I thought it, it was nobody is. Just no, information. Nobody is voting. It was just for information, but there was minutes being taken, and it was what finance meeting. Meeting well, minutes. they made the agenda, right? Right. So right. They they select board. Too. Okay. But it's only posted because all of us were invited to be right. there. Okay. So, but okay. The other th question: Where or when is is personnel committee meeting? Because don't they feed into some of these budget items? Um. Yeah. It's usually. It's usually. Usually you start in the, December sometime. Yeah, it's usually at the, in terms of their recommendation, it usually comes, well, I'm not exactly sure when it will come. Yeah. Um, but that tip, that usually is something we add on at the, it's usually not in the budget, right? But it, yeah. Okay, and with the, the schools for February 25th, that's okay with uh, Darius and? Yep. The 18th is not good, and the 4th okay. is not good. Because we won't really have uh, state budget numbers in early February, it's optimistic. And that includes uh, Franklin Tech? Um, Franklin Tech hasn't come in the past. Um, okay. I can invite them. I don't think you be invited. Why not? So I was, well, I had a meeting with Paul and Tay and this kind of what we had tentatively talked about, so. Okay. Unless there's any strong objections, then I'll forward this to him and see if there's any last minute tweaks and I'll send it back out again. What are the, what are yeah. the, what are the numbers in parentheses? The number, oh, those are, those just correspond with my budget sheets. Oh. The four, five, ten, yeah. three, two, oh, yeah, okay. those just with my budget book. Good. What else? Uh, Williamsburg Road Bridge up project update. That should be going out to bid um, January. Uh, we're going over the, the bid documents now, back and forth with the engineer and town council. Um, so it will be due sometime in February. But I do need to ask Joyce to sign this. We can sign it after. Um, okay. That's. We need to extend the uh, small bridge grant agreement because it expires at the end of the month. We're not going to get the bridge built. Yeah. In you think? <laughs> how many other days we have left? Um, I put the Fred. You had asked me to put the Whitley history book thing on in the future agenda. I don't know if if that's going sure. anywhere or not. But uh, yeah, let me talk about that because probably at, at the end of, of what's going to happen with that. Uh, just to let the public know, you know, we, we currently have, uh, FCAT, can you zoom in? We have a history book uh, that was last updated at the time of our bicentennial, uh, 1971. Uh, and I thought like six or nine months ago, it would be good to update this book for our upcoming 250th celebration. So uh, I reached out to some committees and tried to get seek PA funding, uh, uh, but wasn't able to do that. So my next effort was, was to uh, have a meeting with, with people that were interested in publishing and, and writing books uh, in Waitley. We have uh, several authors in, in Waitley that, that meet that criteria. Uh, I had two or three meetings with them, uh, specifically George Colt, uh, Wendy Curtis and, and even uh, Janine Atkins uh, 
and Deborah Carney. They were all interested in contributing to a book to update, but nobody wanted to take the, the lead in managing. Uh, talking further with, uh, with the Historical Society, which now has copies of this book and prior ones and, and makes this available, they have done updates to this that I wasn't aware of. That I guess I'd just like to inform people in town what's going to happen. Uh, if, you, if you notice in this book, about half of it is genealogy, and the other half is uh, about 25 articles about Waitley. Uh, what's already been done, the genealogy part has already been updated by Derricka Smith, is uh, part of the Historic Society. Uh, and their idea is to put that on the website because of the volume. It's much thicker than this, the, 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 the genealogy portion of it. Uh, by the time of the bison, by our tercentennial, I guess, uh, in 2021. Uh, the other part, the, the history part of it, uh, the articles, uh, the Historic Society has also agreed to update that in a smaller pamphlet size, I don't know, 40, 50 page publication. It will be available for our celebration as well. Uh, so the, the book itself won't be uh, redone in the form it is. It will be two separate, two separate uh, publications. Uh, at the same time, the Wendy Curtis, a, a resident of Whateley, ha, has expressed some interest in, in updating and publishing a book on the geology of Whateley. How has Whateley evolved from Lake Hitchcock and, and other events over, over the years? And uh, she uh, is, has expressed interest in doing that independent of what the Historic Society is going to do to update this book of the genealogy. So she has an interest in doing that, or in, and she has a co-author from Greenfield that will be doing that. Uh, and hopefully that will, part of it will be available at time for our, our celebration in 21. So, so just to keep in everybody in town informed, I, I guess, of uh, what's happening with updates to our history, history book and, and genealogy. I don't want to have a discussion about it, but it's just a point of reference that I, I would strongly encourage us to think about doing an e-book. Well, that, that is an option still that's being talked yeah. about. At least the, the genealogy part will be that way. The whole thing. But, well, e that, that is. Two, same volume, e-book, yeah. done. Yeah, it could, that could happen as well, yes. It is the 21st century. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, there's tax. Yep, tax rate for fiscal year 2020 has been set at 15.67. Uh, prior year's tax rate was 15.52. It's better than our uh, projected tax rate, though, that we that we were guessing in the spring because we had better than 10-year average growth in terms of what we what we use for our estimates. Um, you know, in about three three and a half million of that will was attributed to the two solar facilities. So, oh. um, okay. it, it does, it We're doing does well. bring in revenue. Um, and then we don't need to talk specifically about this, but I think probably late January, early February, we should be thinking about having a special town meeting. Um, there's probably five or six things that aren't pressing, but they've kind of been sitting out there for yeah. a couple months Maybe now and enough. we just, Probably should, should. So probably that January 29th or February 12th select board meeting. Probably somewhere around there. Yeah. Might be somewhere around there. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then we also just to let the board know we received a small grant from Maya, a small uh, loss prevention grant from Maya. Um, they were really, they were again focused on OSHA stuff and it was $4,300 to get. Um, storage cabinets for flammables and hazardous materials, um, okay. which we need for our um, fire station, highway, highway garage, and water department for not storing chemicals quite the way we're supposed to. So um, yeah. we'll be able to purchase those and improve safety and compliance. 
And then just quickly, Jonathan alluded to it, in terms of CPA applications, um, I had submitted one for the remainder of the cost for the, for the Whitley Open Space Plan, because that the, the grant, notice the grant came out the day before the CPA applications were due. So I quickly uh, put one put together and in. put in a placeholder for that. That was $10,000. The estimate we got for a plan was 20000 to update the plan. Okay. Seems a little steep, but we don't need to get into that right now. And then the other one was for, uh, we had talked about paying for our portion of the Frontier track. Um, we talked about that as being a recurring item that CPA uh, could fund. So I also put in an application for that, okay. um, which I think they, I don't remember if they approved that annual going forward. The well, last year was talked about as an annual. Last year, and it's going to be up to discussion the next one. Um, um, trying to figure out some stuff. Yeah. So I also put that in just so that we had a yeah. loser opportunity. So I think that's about it. Yeah. Um, the last thing you think, see a little note about thank you to Yankee Camp. Oh, it, it struck me as to whether Maybe. whether our departments are doing that once they get. I think yes. that they, they might be, it wouldn't hurt for us to send a note. We were there, we said thank you in person. Uh, just for, for, for people watching, uh, Yankee Candle uh, every year gives uh, gifts to the towns of Waitley and Deerfield, where the facilities are in Western Massachusetts. Um, and uh, uh, this uh, every other year, something goes to either police or fire. This year went to the fire departments. Uh, Deerfield bought a uh, infrared camera, and Waitley was getting an, uh, uh, something for reeling the larger hoses, which would help prevent injuries among firefighters uh, at the end of a, uh, of a of an, uh, whatever action they might have. So uh, that um, that was there, but they also gave generously to the schools. They uh, do every year. They do scholarships for frontier students going to college. Um, they also gave an extra grant of four thousand dollars per school to uh, Frontier, to the Tech School, to Waitley Elementary and Deerfield Elementary, and all of the principals were there to accept those and, and say thank you. So we've said thank you in person. It can't hurt to follow up with a with a note. Uh, I'd be happy to come in and sign it on okay. behalf of the board. So I think that's that's uh, a fine idea. So we send them a candle with it. Uh, oh, well, <laughs> the, the pic uh, picture oh, no. of no. We can send You're being picture. very generous, come on. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. if that, it seems... Just kidding. Yeah, okay. okay. I'd just say one thing. Uh, the Center School Vision Committee has been meeting, we met yesterday, and the plan is to do a survey of town residents to see what ideas they have about doing what to do with the center school. Uh, it's gonna be a handout survey, kind of one page deal, and it's proposed to, to do it at the transfer station on a couple Saturdays in January. So oh, okay. anybody that has uh, interest in, in commenting on it, uh, you can do it any committee any of the committee members that were listed in the, the last issue of the scoop or get the handout at the uh, transfer station in weeks and, mm -hmm. and uh, respond that way, so. Yeah. We, we yeah, still haven't solved the challenge with market demand or what what market forces would would yeah. best lend themselves to that facility to have No. Uh, uh, we're still running blind. I don't know the solution to it, but we're still yeah. running blind. We're saying what do we want as a town as opposed to understanding what possibilities yeah. are realistic but they're it's not like we're in a dark trying to figure out what to do I, I guess I hear yeah. here here and there are bits and pieces and I think mean, Brian may even uh, there's some interest in it in the in, in the school property there uh, okay. yeah. uh, yeah. mostly for the town town townspeople are, we, we, I guess we've been hearing about so it's I guess a little, a lot more than what we've heard of the, the blue school before. I mean, there was nothing there before. Understand? Yeah, but there is there is some some interest now. Whether people really are interested in purchasing it, if that's the option, uh, I guess we don't know. But they're gonna have to do a feasibility study. You know, and <coughs> a lot yeah. of going to go into yeah. Yeah. environmental so, impact. So we are we are hearing some okay. feedback. 
okay. okay. I'm glad that's moving along. Okay. And uh, if, if people don't use the transfer station on the weeks you happen to be there, would this merit a robocall to let people know to make them available at the post office and uh, uh, town offices maybe? Yeah, I think we can. I think there was talk about making it available on, on the web. Right, and it could be on the website. Electronic availability as well, yeah. right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. And, and post office and some other yeah. places, library. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Rich Korpieski stopped by earlier today. He did uh, a conversation with him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait till the next scoop. Are we done? Which is the next? March. Uh, March. So that's yeah, a little late. Yeah. Late. That'd be too late. Yeah. Are we done? Um, I was going to ask Brian. You're done. Yeah. I'm done. Oh, I would entertain a motion. Yep. Second. All right. All in favor? Yeah. Hey. Good night, everybody.